Welcome to the Bible GPS podcast episode and today we continue our series on stories of hope because I firmly believe that the best way to give people hope is just to share a story and in the end we are all stories of God because God journeys with us and we just need to see how God is journeying with us and today I have a wonderful guest his name is Keith Burke. Keith is so wonderful to have you here before I introduce you I just want to share a little bit how we got to meet each other. I came to visit Florida and I met Keith and his lovely wife Lucia and I stayed in their home as well and it was just amazing to experience their hospitality, to listen to their stories and how they experienced Jesus Christ. And then one day Keith shared a story to me about someone that lived with them in their house, a student. And I said, you know, this is such a powerful story of hope and that is why I have Keith on our podcast today, just to share that story that happened in their house. So Keith, yeah, maybe before we share that story, just introduce yourself, where you live, and from where are you? Yes, uh, my name is Keith Burke, and um, I live in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And um, my journey started off in Virginia, Hampton, Virginia. And um, I pursued the United States Air Force at... 1982 and um yes i did 20 years in the air force and there's a lot of in-between stuff and um now i'm end up here in fort walton beach florida wonderful yeah so keith one day you shared a story of me that you have at a student from europe can you just share that story yes um let's see i think it was about 2019, um, my wife and myself and my son, we were um, looking at um, perhaps doing an exchange student program. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing because we were just talking about it as a family. And we went to a barbecue and um, we were just chatting with this couple. And they said, well, that's what we've done. So they said, well, can we give you the number? And we'll get the coordinator to give you a call and see what goes from there. Well, my wife and I have always talking about doing two different types. You can, um, they can pay you. Yeah. Or you can do it um, and be a blessing. Yes. Without the finances. So we chose to do the blessing side. So why did you choose that? Um, we, we believe in giving. We know that um, giving is a, is a positive thing. I think God has really blessed my wife and my family. So we chose to not make um, finances to be an issue in our life, but a blessing in our life. Correct. It reminds me one day when a Mexican boxer told me, he said, it's always better to give than to receive. Amen. 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 So we um, went through her and she sat down and she gave us, she says, okay, you get to choose who comes into your home, but Mm -hmm. they also get to choose you. Mm -hmm. So it's a two-way program. So um, we went through the profiles and everything, and my son originally was thinking about Japanese students. But then we were told that, you know, they said with Japanese students, sometimes there can be some difficulties because of the language barrier. Correct. And we thought, well, they're all language barriers because they don't speak English. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, so we went through it, and we saw a young man from Czech Republic. Yes. So we also get to choose whether there are believers in a religion or no believers. Mm. So we chose to choose someone who didn't believe because we like to believe that we could shine the light and we could be effective and perhaps encourage them with a faith or a walk. So, so we chose this young man from Czech Republic and he's, um, he was from a single family, um, get made good grades. They have to be proficient in English at some level So they don't have too many struggles. So the ball rolled in our court and everything worked out right. And the next thing we know, he was on his plane on the way to the United States of America. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So then after that, and once he arrived, um, he fit in very well. He was a very, very smart young man. uh, Very disciplined. I mean, he didn't ask for much. And... um, and then we were able to, um, I, I know a little bit about Europe because I spent 13 years in Europe, um, from Germany, from England to Italy. Mm. 
And I was over there doing the Berlin Wall, so I know a little about, about the Czech, um, Czechoslovakia, which is now divided into Czech Republic and Slovakia. Yeah. So I know a little bit about um, his mother's age. She would have been in communism. So we would sit down and we would talk about religion and politics and things, and I'm pretty straightforward with that. I, I like to encourage people and see where they come from. So we often had these conversations, sometimes good, sometimes not so good. How did he experience those conversations? What was his reaction? He, I don't think he'd ever been introduced to a faith. He, I think he was a smart young man, so I think he knew of faiths, mm. but I don't think he really ever sat down and had those conversations. Okay. Because from what I know, I think it's a very, very small percentage of Czech people that have a faith. Mm. I, I need to check that number, but I believe it's very small. Yeah. So, yeah, so we, we used to have conversations. He, he, he was, I, I believe I can say that he was atheist. Yes. He, and, and he was like, no, you know, I'm, I'm smart. And I, I, I think I got all this figured out. Yeah, yeah. So my wife and I, we, we knew that he was going to be in our home. So we encouraged him to go to church with us. Hmm. Um, we go to church every Sunday. And um, we said, hey, would you like to join us for church? And, and because he's such a nice young man, I think he struggled with saying no. Yes. Good. <laughs> yeah, he struggled. But that was a good thing. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So he went to church, and um, sometimes it wasn't quite like he was dialed in, whether he was paying attention or how much he was he was feeling or wasn't feeling. Or we would ask him questions, and he might ask one or two questions, and that would be it. Mm -hmm. He went to youth group sometimes. Yeah, he actually attended youth group. And then um, we, would, we would introduce him to other Christian friends, and he developed friendships with them because I'm really blessed. My friends um, don't discriminate Christians or non-Christians. Mm -hmm. they, they are loving, and they accept you as you are. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so one evening, we um, come home from seeing some friends, and we were sitting in the living room, and uh, my wife and I was talking to him, and for that that particular night, he had a lot of questions about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting. And, um, and I was so blessed because my wife is so loving and so caring to him. They really, really develop a good relationship because my wife, she just loved on him. And, and, he, and he was used to that coming from a, a single parent mother raising him. Mm -hmm. And we could see that his mother and his relationship was like that. Mm -hmm. So my wife just picked that. She just picked right up. Mm -hmm. And we were sitting and talking one night, and all of a sudden he just went, ooh, 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 something's wrong. Mm. Something's wrong. And right before he said that, Lucy had asked him the question, Martin, if something goes wrong in your life, who are you going to call on? Mm. Lucy was asking him that question, encouraging him. So he twitched and something happened. Probably five minutes after we had this conversation. So my wife and I was like, Martin, what's wrong? You okay? You okay? And he said, no, something's wrong. And he couldn't say he wasn't breathing. We couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so he got up and, he, and Lucy tried to pamper him. And, and we said, okay, Martin, I don't know if this is a good thing, but okay. He says, I said, you go to bed. And if you wake up tomorrow morning still feeling worse or just as bad, we're going to go to the doctor or to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So he said, okay, I'm, 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 I'm okay with that. So he woke up the next morning white as sheets. I mean, mm -hmm. he was just white as a ghost. He was still in a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. We had no idea what it was. So we took him to the hospital. We got into the emergency room, and he collapsed in the hospital, wow. in the emergency room. Wow. Collapsed. So we didn't know what was wrong with him. They came back out five minutes mm -hmm. later, and they says, Martin has a collapsed lung. Wow. And the doctor explained it to us. They said, very, very skinny people, small people, lungs can collapse. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's not something wrong with them. It's just something that happens to that size people. Yeah. So all this happened in a probably about um, January of 2020. And I believe that happened close before he went to need to go back to. Yes, yes. Because he actually came here for the whole school year from um, August of 2019 
till May of 2020. That's mm. how long he was supposed to stay. Yeah. So this happened in about January of 2020. Mm. And he went into the hospital and, and some awesome things happened while he was in the hospital. Mm. He, um, we had friends and people come visit him and he was overwhelmed. Mm. People were coming to pray with him and love on him. And it, and it, was, and it was kind of funny because no one never stopped to ask if he was a Christian. They never asked him if he wanted him to pray for him, but he was open. Mm. And people prayed for him and it was carried. He was just blown away from the love of the people. Mm. And people that we knew worked in the hospital. People took time for from work to come visit him. So that was really good. Then he ended up needing a second operation. And all this time is happening. My wife, Lucy, is calling his parents and calling them, trying to comfort them. Hmm. Because they were saying, should we come over? They didn't have the finances. They were a bit worried about the American system. But God just kept blessing us, and we were able to develop a relationship with his mother and his father. Yeah. So then um, Martin came out of the hospital. And um, he's a strong bright young man. He didn't whimper. He didn't, you know, he, he came out pretty confident that I'm going to get better. So about this time, then the COVID-19 thing hits. Mm. So, wow, they're not going to school. So Martin's around here. He's exercising. Um, and one of the things my wife and I did was we've always opened our home up to people. We yeah. have the open door policy. So our church decided to do um, videos so people could watch the services from home. Mm. For two months this happened. And Lucy and I decided, well, let's do church at home. Mm. Let's invite people in. We'll watch the church service. We'll fellowship together. We'll eat together, ask questions. And, and it's probably about two families and a couple single people, probably mm. a total of maybe 15 people. So we did this for about two months, and I think it really blessed Martin. He just saw how we, we continue to worship and love Jesus Christ from the building of the church, from our home, in our relationships. And um, it was just amazing what was happening. He was videoing our house doing services. Wow. He was, um, he, you could just see something was going on in his wow. heart and his life. And he was changing right before our eyes. And one day, my wife, you know, he, he went back to the bedroom, and my wife was just checking on him, and he was really looked like something was going on. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was crying and excited at the same time, and he was telling my wife, something's going on, yeah. something's going on, and mm -hmm. I believe it was the Holy Spirit. Yes. And uh, we asked him about accepting Jesus, life, Jesus Christ into his life, and he says, yes, I have. Mm -hmm. And that was exciting because that's why our whole prayer is to reach people for Christ. Mm. And it was just exciting to see the change in them. And then some of the things that we had been talking about, he started saying. Wow. And that was amazing. So anyway, the pandemic hit and they weren't going back to school. So I said, Martin, I says, there's a window of opportunity for you to go back home. I says, maybe you need to do that. And he was so excited about the things that he was learning here. And he was a little bit hesitant because in Czech Republic, we did some research and it was hard to find Pentecostal churches. There were some Catholic churches and we found one, but it was probably about an hour and a half, maybe two hours from his hometown. So he was a little bit like, oh, I'm going to struggle with my faith if I go back there. So we just encouraged them to watch the videos, to give us a call, mm -hmm. to stay in contact with us. So it was really exciting. So he did decide to return home. But it was beautiful to watch him. You know, that's, I think that's all Christian prayers that... You know, we love to be able to sow the seed and watch it grow yeah, yeah. And, 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 and be able to say, yes, I saw him change. I saw him change. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. So, and we still stay in contact with him today. And um, he's on fire for the Lord. And um, he asked us to pray for him. And he said, that, yeah, he struggles with his faith because there's no one around him that really can share that with him. But, um, yeah, he's reaching out and talking to us. We stay in contact with him at least once a week. Hmm. Um, three times a month, whatever, but a beautiful young man. We're looking forward to seeing him again one day. Hmm.
Yeah. It must have meant so much to you and Lucy oh. to see a changed life in front of you. Amen. God is so good. We're just exciting to see people get excited like we are. Yeah. To know what Jesus Christ is doing in our lives. And this is a wonderful story of hope. Someone coming to your house, yeah. experiencing the love of Christ, yeah. going to hospital, yeah. experiencing yeah. the love of yes. other Christians. Yes. And, you know, this is what the Bible says, by our love, yeah. people will know. Amen. Amen. Keith, Amen. you and I had many other conversations, and this is just one that I want people to hear about this young person, about the power of prayer, the power of love and how God's Spirit will change someone. So thank you for sharing that story. Amen, amen, amen. But I got to know you as someone who is outspoken. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We have talked politics, many things, and it was so good to talk about that. And the question I have for you is, when you look at the landscape of American church, how do you see the American church today? You know, it's, my wife and I, we've been married 25 years, mm. and I was really blessed when I married my wife. I had promised her for me and my house, we would serve the Lord. And, um, and today, we're, I believe we're just as strong, if not getting stronger, mm. as since that day in 1997, that year of 1997. Mm. Um, we've we've um, done a lot of traveling. My wife is from Italy. Um, she was born in Australia. Okay. We've lived in both countries yeah. and um, we've lived in Hawaii. We've done mission trips in the Philippines. So we've seen different types of churches and mm. different um, nationalities worshiping the Lord. And we learned quickly, uh, for myself anyway, that the church is us. And um, mm. when I look at the building and I look at ministries, I can see how... We're bringing people in and we're showing them um, and, and, and preaching to them. But the discipleships and the relationships is not always easy. Mm. You know, when, especially when the churches get really big. Mm. I think it's too easy to just show up and go home. And I think um, a lot of churches do the small groups, Correct. which is very good. But then even then, the leaders can sometimes not really do the things that they need to do or should do. Mm. So, and I, and I, and, and um, I've been talking with friends and family and people and stuff like that. And I'm really excited about the home church and, and going into people's homes because I was taught in my Christian walk that two of the most expensive things that we buy in our life, we don't use enough for Christ. And that's our cars and our homes. Correct. And it's just so exciting to go into someone's home mm. and see the pictures on the wall, mm. see the, the, the furniture they set on, see how they uh, eat, and just the things. It's just so personal. You can't hide who you are in your home. Mm. And I think being able to share that with people is so exciting because you can relax. Mm. You can let your guard down. You know, mm. um, you don't have you walk into a building and you may not know anybody. Yeah. But when you go into somebody's home, you being welcomed in. And mm. it's, I think it's it's a good way to be able to show God's love. I love it. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes, yeah, good. Keith, as you know, I grew up during the times of apartheid in South Africa. Mm. You know, where color was a huge thing, and here I am in America talking yeah. to you. And how do you see the political situation in America these days? You know, I'm living now in Canada, and I see the polarization in America, yeah. the politics, and it doesn't look good from the outside. No, I um, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm very concerned, and I, the awesome thing about that is, I think when you look at politics and you look at life, I always, when I talk to people, I want to bring it in contact with God, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Correct. Because it's so easy um, to talk to smart people, to talk to educated people, philosophers, engineers, doctors. They're very smart. They mm -hmm. can read and they can write, but only God can give you wisdom. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm excited about what's happening because it boils down to right and wrong. Mm -hmm. It boils down to knowing the truth or accepting the lies. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think more and more people are coming to understand that because, you know, um, I, I love the one, one of the many things that Martin Luther King said, and he continued to say, it's not about the color of your skin. Correct. It's not about being Democrat or Republic. It's about right and wrong. Mm-hmm. And today, I think that's, that is so, um, there's so many gray areas. Mm. There's, there's so many things changing. They're changing the dictionary. They're changing the schools. They're changing the language. And, and you know, God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Mm. You know, so that's the awesome thing about it is who you're listening to, who you're talking to, who you're spending your time with. So I, I think that we need to check ourselves and measure ourselves with the truth, which is Jesus Christ. Wonderful. Yeah. Have you always been a Christian or was there a moment that you realized, you know, I am now a new person? That's amazing because, you know, there's very few people to come to know Christ without being in a crisis. (laughs) (laughs) That's well said. (laughs) And and I'm one of those people. I was um, I was raised in a Christian home. Hmm. Um, I knew of God. Hmm. Um, I was taught some things of the Bible. Uh, but I can honestly say that I wasn't following and I wasn't um, devoted to him. I went into the military knowing of God. Um, I ended up um, going in the military and then all of a sudden something happened to me in my life and I started searching and I started, you know, wait a minute, this is this not supposed to happen, yeah. you know? So then I thought, well, well, what am I going to do with this? So I started, um, and then I, I went to, I went, I moved from Italy to the United States, Clovis, New Mexico. Mm. And um, I, my coworker, I went to work one day and I told my coworker, I said, hey, I said, you know, I says, I need to find a good church. And he says, oh, he says, I go to a good church. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I'm a praise and worship leader there. He says, you should come. He says, you would enjoy it. Wonderful. So I went and didn't stop. I went and I felt like I was at home. Mm. It was a small church at the time. And I, I, I devoted my life to Christ. I got baptized. I got excited. And at all this time was happening, I was dating my wife. She was in Australia. Mm. So I called her up excited and telling her to find a church and, and all that. And as soon as, and soon as we got back, to the United States after getting married in 97 in Sydney, Australia. We came back and people were wondering, they said, your wife's Catholic. What are you going to do now? I said, I don't know. So I I never really talked to my wife about her going to a Catholic church and Mm. me going to my church. So I was so blessed. Lucy decided, we'll go to your church. Hmm. And she had a lot of questions. But then again, God does miracles. Mm. One of my coworkers' wife came from a Catholic background, and she just took my wife in. And when my wife had questions, she was able to encourage her. Mm. So next thing I know, my wife is giving her heart to the Lord again, as Catholics do and as Protestants do. Mm. And um, she's baptized again, and and we just we just were going to a good church that had a good. Fam- it was called. Um, Faith Christian Family Church. And I'm telling you, that's exactly what it was. Mm. Yeah. What for you is a good church, Keith? A good church is, is I think, I think I'm, I'm being taught by one of the guys that I met probably about a year ago. And I'm understanding that as Christians, there's three people we need in our lives. And this has been really powerful for me. And I'm still working on this today. And I think I say it because I'm, I'm, I'm not only sharing this with the person, but I'm talking to myself. We need a Paul, um, someone that's a senior in our lives, a leader. Mm. We need a Barnabas, which is somebody that's going to be a friend in Christ. Correct. And then the third person, we need a Timothy, someone that we can teach. Teach what we know, not what we don't know, not what we think we know about what we know. Because we all got something to share. We all know something. So I think society tells us that you've got to know everything. No, you don't. You just love Christ. 
But I think a, a good church is somewhere where they're reaching out to the community and the people mm. because it's about relationships. Correct. That's what Jesus wants with us is a relationship. Because yes. so many people say, you know, they do this and they do that. Um, they say this about Christ. Yeah, but what do you say about Christ? You know, what is God saying to you? Because when we get to when we get to the judgment seat, he's not going to ask you about your, your mother, your father, your brother, or sister. Right. He's going to ask about your walk. Yes. Yeah. Can you just repeat those three people that you meet in your life? Yeah. I, I, it's a Paul. Yes. Which is that senior, that 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 ultimate person that's going to speak into your life. It's that kind of a mentor. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. A bit like the Trinity. Correct. Right. OK. And then you got your Barnabas, a friend in Christ. Christ, someone mm. that you can sit down and talk about things, mm. you, you know, you hold each other accountable, you're just good friends. Mm. And then that Timothy, someone that you're going to teach and you're going you're gonna to stand by them and perhaps be that Paul in that Timothy life. But you know, it reminds me of the Trinity, yeah. if you know yeah. that Paul, you know, is like the mentor and yeah. God, our father is our mentor. Amen. Barnabas means friend and yeah. Jesus is our friend. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. And Timothy, the teacher Amen. and the Holy Spirit wants to teach us and lead us into the truth. Amen. Amen. So that's, that's, that's yeah. powerful. That's thank exciting. You. Yeah. That's thank exciting. you for sharing that. It's profound. That's, that's a... Keith, there's so many things that we can talk about, but... What I can say from my end is that the first day when I met you, I could see Christ in you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And the Bible <laughs> says that Christ in us is the hope of glory. Amen. That's <laughs> so exciting. And your story is a story oh. of hope because Christ works through you and Good. your wife. And that is powerful to see and to witness. And that is a beautiful story in itself. So thank you so very much, Keith. I got to know many of your friends and see mm. them and hear them talk about the impact you and your wife mm. have. You need to know that, and that is Thank the way that God is using you. You don't Thank need the church to do that. Your house <laughs> is your church where you amen, do that. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah. yeah, so too. thank you very much. All the best for you and your wife, for your future, and for the many lives that you will continue to touch. May God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. This podcast is part of the Bible GPS Institute. My name is Kobus Jenis and I'm the director of the Bible GPS Institute and our main goal is to teach people life skills through Bible skills. And why GPS? Now the GPS normally in vehicles is the global satellite system. But the Bible is our God positioning system because for the unknown future we have something, we need something to guide us that has authority. And the Bible has so much authority. It's clear, it's current, and it is compelling. Now, how do we teach people life skills through Bible skills? Number one, we have a 10-week discipleship course. You can get all the information on the link that we will share below this video. And it's everything is for free. We also post messages every single week. And then we have our podcast where we give stories of hope to people. Now, you can support us in so many ways. You can share this video. You can leave us a comment, and I promise you I will comment back and just to say thank you for your comment. You can like this video, and you can also hit the subscribe button to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Another way that you can support our ministry to expand the ministry is through donations, and we also have a link below this video for you how you can make donations. So thank you very much. Keep on praying for us because we believe that we need to bring people back to God's Word so that God's Spirit can guide us to a hopeful future.